Happy New Year and welcome back to a rejuvenated weekly wind-up. With resolutions made, the programme is back to tackle the issues that relate to you. I'm Kyle Warwick and on this week's weekly wind-up I'm joined by Liberal Democrat Councillor for the Combe Valley, David Ridgway, Conservative Parish Councillor for, in Murfield, Tom Hurst, and also joining is his local community leader and weekly wind-up resident, Pastor Carlton Napier. Welcome, gentlemen. We're going to start off today's show with a discussion about strike action. Over the past week, lecturers from Huddersfield University have been taking part in industrial action against their employers. Jackie Lane is branch secretary of the UCU, the union that organised the strike. Well, we're striking because, uh, in real terms, we've suffered a 13% pay cut over the last five years. Yes, we did get a little, uh, a little bonus of £350 each, but that's peanuts, that goes nowhere, and that was for everybody. We need to step it up, and that's what we're doing now. Uh, we don't like striking, we don't like losing pay, we don't like disadvantaging the students, but sometimes you've just got to stand up and be counted. Jackie mentions there that whole day strikes have proved useless in changing university bosses' minds in terms of getting staff a pay rise. Tom, do you feel that strike action has lost some of its impact? Well, I don't think strike action has ever had a particularly good impact on the people who utilise the services of those who are striking. Uh, the particular moral aspect of this situation that I myself would personally adhere to is that your boss is your boss and you respect him and you try and do a good job for him, as best as job as possible, even if he runs the place like a feudal king. My moral position is certainly that I would honour my boss and be grateful with my lot. Um, that's the moral aspect of this situation. But I think there's also an economic aspect here, and that is that these people are on the public payroll, or the government payroll, call it what you want. Now, as an economic argument, we must address this by saying that actually government doesn't have any money. And really these people are not striking against the university bosses. Given the fact they're on the public payroll, they're actually striking against the taxpayer, the people who pay their wages. And so what they're saying is, is they're going out and they're saying, give me more of your money or I'm going to continue misbehaving. And I don't think that's a particularly moral or very nice position to take. And given that these people are asking for more public money in a way which is rather mischievous and, and rather misbehaving, I think we should be far more discontented about this than we currently are. That's fair enough. Um, is that something that you would agree with, Councillor? Um, the, the issue is, is uh, more complicated than that. The university lecturers have had no change in their income levels for four years, as far as I understand the situation. Um, but then again, neither has anybody else. The, the country is in um, a very difficult economic situation, and I rather feel that um, the university lecturers by coming out on staff, actually it's not just the lecturers, it's, it's the university staff right across and the cleaners right up. For them to be coming out on strike in what must be regarded as a, a relatively safer form of employment than perhaps in uh, the small, medium-sized enterprises that we hear so much about is cocking a snook at the rest of society. I personally feel that they are misguided in taking strike action at this time. Um. One of the arguments that the strike has put across is that the university currently has a, a surplus of £1 billion worth of money. Do you feel that it's, it's fair for um, university bosses to take the kind of pay that they do whilst refusing to well, increase other staff's there wages? A surplus of a billion pounds, first of all I'd be fascinated to know how the, the, uh, the, the the unions know that that's there. Secondly, I'd be fascinated to know that they know that it's surplus. A billion pounds is an enormous amount of money. But what I would say is that Huddersfield University has transformed itself and its position within our town and our borough over the last five to ten years through the singular and specific actions of the Vice Chancellor Bob Cryer. It has brought itself from, become, from being a pretty ordinary provincial university, if you like, a grandiose polytechnic 
College and it's become uh, literally uh, an international main player in some of the cutting edge technology work that it's now doing and I am a massive fan of Huddersfield University. I don't think the money that the university has in reserve has got anything to do with this strike because the pay does not come directly from the universities, it comes from the government. The government sets the pay levels, not the university. Um, and also, if, my, if I may as well say, I saw some of them protesting on the uh, crossroads yesterday at the university, and it seems to me that uh, there is always an element in these protests and strikes of protest for protest's sake by a left-wing bunch of metropolitan trendies and cultural Marxists who are, like everyone else, against poverty, war and injustice, who isn't. Uh, I think it, they're making a mess and they should go home. Pastor Napier, do you sort of feel that strikers now, they, they're kind of struggling to make the voices heard? Do you think they might have to diversify the way that they make themselves heard in a contemporary society? Well, I'm really going <clears> to <throat> avoid speculation, but um, a strike has a purpose. And when you think of past strikes and the horrible times you've been through, those days are long gone with. And here we have a university in the heart of our town, meant to be the brain of our town. If they can't sit down at the table and negotiate decently and get what they want, personally, I don't think a strike is going to do it. If this is a university and they can't get their points across and pressure their employer or government or whoever. I think it's a sad day for us in this town. Is there, is there not an argument though that um, the, the staff um, are, the, are the people that have got the university to such a well respected level that it is essentially education that the university is selling and that it is those staff members that provide the quality of education that allows the university to make the money that it does. That's right Kyle, that's the whole point. The university cannot exist without the staff. So when will employers learn that they've got to look after their staff? That's your priority. Hmm. It won't function. I mean these are, they are arguing that they've sort of they've essentially seen a 13% pay decrease because they've they, they took a 15% pay cut and then they've only received 1% pay increases over the past couple of years, which has meant in real terms they've their argument is they've seen a 13% pay decrease. Well, that's a very interesting point, and of course statistics are statistics. But then again, uh, those people who have found in the recession that they've lost their jobs altogether have taken a 100% wage rise and they, uh, wage decrease, and in fact they can't strike against anybody because they've lost their jobs. The university has uh, raised its standards, it's raised its standards to an enormous degree. Uh, it's also um, encouraged its staff to raise its standards from a qualification point of view, all part of their elbow, but I think the unions are perhaps taking an attitude where the university employers are a soft touch and I don't think they're actually gaining a great deal of public support for it. Absolutely, but isn't there a, an argument, I mean you say that there's, there's no sort of way that people who have lost their jobs entirely can strike, but surely the way that they can make their voices heard is by going out and voting. Very much so, and I would encourage everybody to register to vote. And in fact, I can tell you, Kyle, that my birthday is coming on the 5th of February, and it is also voter registration day. So go out and register to vote on my birthday. Indeed, if you're wanting to make yourselves heard, that's one way that you can go about it. Um, another way that you can go about that is to contact the Weekly Wind-Up and give us your opinion on anything that you've heard in this segment of the programme. The Weekly Wind-Up can be contacted by email on info at kirkleyslocaltv.com and you can also contact us on Twitter by searching at Kirkley's Local TV. Please join us after the break when we'll be discussing the changing face of Huddersfield Town Centre. Thank you. And welcome back. I'm Kyle Warwick and this is Kirkley's Local Television's Weekly Wind-Up. Joining me this week are Councillor David Ridgway, Pastor Carlton Napier 
and Tom Hurst. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Now we're going to dip straight into a discussion about Huddersfield Town Centre. The prevailing opinion amongst the community seems to be that a lot of Huddersfield's specialist shops and retailers have been replaced by discount stores, bookies and bars. Would you say that there is anything that the council can do to maintain a diverse shopping centre for Huddersfield, councillor? Well, yes, there is. But I don't agree with the premise upon which you ask your question. I suppose it is true that there has been uh, a reduction in specialist shops and that is rather sad but you've got to look into the reason as to why that's happened uh, for example all the proliferation of charity shops is is uh, assisted by uh, a rate rebate given by the council if you run a charity shop why should a charity shop which is competing for the same um, pound in your pocket as any other shop why should they get the benefit of a rate rebate when I who might want to run a specialist um, uh, the pound discount store can't get a rate rebate is there an imbalance there but where can the council help I believe the council can help by ensuring that there is a sensible plan for parking costs for public transport to get the people into the into the town centre to encourage the people come into the town centre and once that encouragement is there I am absolutely convinced that the local entrepreneurs who want desperately to have a, an outlet for their, uh, their their enterprises will actually take the opportunity to open up in, in, the, uh, in, in the town centre but if the absentee landlords don't come on board with this then you will begin to see uh, a further increase of, of shopping taking place outside town centres in new business parks, in new sh shopping malls elsewhere and so on and so forth. Would you say that um, it's possible for these smaller shops that are opening up, the sort of um, almost niche shops, for them to compete against internet trade, Tom? With regards to the last answer, um, it appears that the council is uh, willing to talk all about Huddersfield and, and nowhere else to say that, first of all. Ooh. As a Murfield Town Councillor, I'm very used to large retail chain supermarkets barging in where they're not wanted and developers not particularly behaving. Um, I am a great fan and a great sympathiser with uh, the survival and the starting up of new small and medium-sized enterprises. I sympathise with it immensely. And I think what can help with this is for us as a country to master a concept which has been beautifully mastered by our continental cousins, which is the town square. Now, you look at St George's Square and it is surrounded by a barrier of tarmac, of road, whereas our continental cousins have a town square which is incredibly social, incredibly open and incredibly accessible. People can go to market stores when they want to and I know that we have the food and drink festival every year in Huddersfield which situates itself there. But I would love to see that kind of thing all year round where we use St George's Square and squares like it in our country as social hubs where people can go and people can sit and they can have drinks and so on. But in terms of competition with the internet, it's a difficult one. Uh, because the small businesses have to pay various rates which relate to them having a building and not operating over the internet. Uh, I think that the system that small businesses uh, are run under is incredibly punitive and incredibly persecutive uh, in terms of their company growth. I wouldn't want to force a company to grow. If they want to stay the same size, that's fine by me, but the things they punish them with, for example, the pavement tax. If you want to situate two sets of tables and chairs outside of your cafe, you can expect to pay thousands of pounds to the town hall every year for the pleasure of doing so. I think another good idea for small businesses would be uh, for them to own a share of the pavements outside of their businesses, not just the buildings, but I think they should have the ability to be able to customise and uh, change the pavements outside so they themselves will be able to be in charge of creating disabled access and again making the immediate area outside their business more accessible and more attractive to people. Uh, so I'm all in favour of it and I do hope that they're not outcompeted by large chain superstores and the internet. Pastor Napier, do you think that um, more could be done to, to help smaller businesses? Absolutely, yes. And the way we have shopped has changed. And I can't understand if everything around us is changing, 
why the council is not willing to change. And I would like to say the only way we're going to keep the small business in, businesses surviving, we've got to lower the rates. We've got to make the parking regulation and restriction more accessible. People can't walk this long journey to get to the shops. And there's too many restrictions at the moment. And thirdly, the big giants that are coming in, suffocating the small businesses, has got to be looked at seriously. Why should we allow so many of them to set up at almost every strategic point in our town? We are killing off the small businesses, and I hope the council will learn or we just have to speak at the ballot box very soon. And can I just add one other thing, Kyle? Sure. You, you asked your question about Huddersfield Town Centre. Huddersfield Town Centre has its problems. We all know that. We've, we've made comment about them here today. And Tom's made comment about Murfield. But the predominant town centre which is struggling is Dewsbury Town Centre. Well, some interesting opinion here. And obviously we'd really like to hear yours. Weekly Windup can always be con contacted by email on info at kirkleadslocaltv.com and on Twitter by searching at kirkleadslocaltv. Thank you and join us after the break. And welcome back to the final part of this week's show. We're going to go straight into some local stories from the past week. Firstly, allotment rents in Kirkleeds are set to rise by approximately 128% over the next three years. Councillor Andrew Cooper of the Green Party has said that these rises could hit the lowest pay. Is this something that you see affecting many people, gentlemen? A, a rise of 128%? This is what they're over, suggesting. Over the next three years? Um, I think it's symptomatic of the fact that the council has now run out of money. The support coming from central government is um, diminishing. Whether it will affect the poorest, um, I don't think necessarily that the poorest people in, the, in our local area necessarily use allotments. I think people who use allotments are people who are keen on gardening and don't necessarily have the space at home. Right. Um, I think Councillor Cooper is perhaps, um, as they would say in Australia, calling the raw prawn. Um, secondly, a survey of Huddersfield Town fans has suggested that they would like uh, standing areas, safe standing areas at the John Smith Stadium. Furthermore, Terrier's Chairman Dean Hoyle has added his backing saying that, enhan that standing areas enhance the atmosphere at games. Do you think there can be such thing as a safe standing area at football matches, Pastor? I am a sports fanatic and I, it, it drives a fear in me when I hear we're talking about standing in any football ground in the UK. I don't think we have the discipline. I don't think we, 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 we can keep our liquor down. I, I just feel we're setting up ourselves for more disaster than we've seen in the past at Hillsborough. Until we see a sort of discipline where people can go to a game and enjoy it with our family, I mean, however excited you are, win or lose, I don't think standing should be encouraged. Thank you. What, you. what you mainly tend to find is that many of the fans that want to stand are the same fans that want to sing and shout uh, and be, be, be lewd and um, oftentimes drunk as well. Uh, very much accompanied with alcohol and, and so on. I'm a great fan of Huddersfield Town, big admirer of Dean Hoyle, great respect to him for what he's done for the club. Also a big admirer of uh, Sunderland AFC. But sometimes I just see issues such as this and I think what is all this fuss about 22 men click, kicking a bladder around the field? I, I, um, I beg to differ. Uh, well, indeed, I, I strongly beg to differ. And I, I would also add that I, when I go and watch this field town, I don't tend to drink and I find myself standing for at least a quarter of the game. It tends to be in reaction to things that the referee's done, but there you go. <laughs> um, quite entertaining. <laughs> and finally, as a, as a closing story, a learner driver has been stopped on the M62 because she was only accompanied by her pet parrot. Chief Inspector Mark Bonas stated that anyone who takes to the road as a learner must be accompanied by a qualified driver and also states that uh, learner drivers are not allowed on the motorway. Unfortunately, the parrot was not available for comment. 
Um, <laughs> that's it for the weekly wind up this week. Once again, if you'd like to contact us with, in relation to any of the stories that you've heard today, please do so by email on info at kirkleyslocaltv.com and on Twitter by searching at Kirkley's Local TV. Thank you very much for your time and we hope you'll join us next week. Goodbye. <laughs>